Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nikki informs Audra that Jordan attempted to murder her family. Heather arrived at Daniel's house. She had expected Lily to be there, but Daniel informed her that Lily had needed to leave town and would most likely be gone for some time. Heather added that Matty needs her mother since she was devastated. Daniel said he'd spoken with Lily that Matty had escaped the fire unharmed, but she was devastated that a professor she'd known had died. Daniel expressed concern about how he would handle everything if Lucy had been a similar scenario. He stated that it reminded him of all the times he had failed to be there for her and expressed Heather stated her admiration that all that for how Daniel had turned his life around. She advised them to put their pain and hurt behind them. Daniel said that she had no idea how important her forgiveness was to him. Heather stated that she noticed the adjustments he'd made. Lucy, she said, enjoyed being close to him. He stated that Danny had advised him not to waste any of the time he was given, and that was exactly what he meant to do. Daniel inquired as to when Heather would be moving into her new apartment. He promised to assist her with the relocation. She said she appreciated his offer and couldn't thank him enough for assisting her in finding an apartment and recommending her to Chancellor Winters. He expressed his delight office. that things Audra were going well for Heather and Audra that had inquired as to why Claire had not returned her calls. Nikki yelled not to ask about Claire and quickly apologised for her outburst. Claire, she claimed, was a sociopath who no longer worked Claire, according to Nikki, lied and twisted her way into the company in order to set a trap for Nikki and her family. Claire and her aunt Jordan had attempted to murder Nikki and her entire family, but they had all survived. Audra questioned Claire's decision. Claire, according to Nikki, used her as bait to lure the rest of the family to Oregon. Nikki she had flashbacks Audra to her to time at the lake house. Audra the drunkenness, you. her attempt to flee, drinking the vodka from the bottle, and the bottle shattering when she dropped. When Audra questioned if Nikki was okay, she snapped back to reality. Audra inquired if Nikki had heard Audra inquire whether she wanted to proceed with the celebrity blog contract. Nikki suggested that she hadn't totally recovered from her ordeal in Oregon. Nikki revealed to Audra that it still irritated her that they'd been so defenceless at the hands of Claire and her aunt, but she had to get over it because she wasn't going to let them win. Audra stated that sometimes situations were beyond their control, but Nikki would get over the shock of it all and feel like her old self again. Audra recommended they go to the athletic club for lunch. Nikki declined, including the indicating Nikki that she Newman. wasn't ready to face the Audra world, promised to bring Nikki a salad. Nikki grabbed into her purse after Audra departed, pulled out a flask of vodka and drank it. She was shocked when she heard a knock on the door. She hastily tucked the flask away and slipped a mint into her mouth. Nikki claimed she was exhausted and didn't think she could make it through the day when Audra arrived. Nikki was advised to go home and rest by Audra. Audra agreed to stand in for Nikki. Nikki thanked Audra and walked away. Nate informed Devon at Crimson Lights that he was excited to start his new job. He inquired as to whether Devon had any specific projects in mind for him to work on. Devon requested him to review their top priorities portfolio and submit his feedback. Devon also wanted to expose Nate to their recently hired employee, who was incredibly knowledgeable and had resources Devon thought they could exploit because Devon believed Nate was the best person to optimise her ideals. Devon said that with Nate Lily away, that it would be would nice to be able to focus on his work rather than continuously looking over his shoulder, protecting his ADU of Newman's relentless politics. When Victoria arrived, Nate explained that he needed to go to look over the portfolio Devon had mentioned. Nate said goodbye to Victoria as he walked away. Cole stood in the shadows, watching, when Devon stood up to depart, Victoria remarked on how nice it was to see Devon and Nate getting along. Nate was back at Chancellor Winters, she inquired. Devon affirmed that he was and that Nate was significant to the family. Victoria concurred. She stated that she did not believe Nate set out to undermine or betray Victor since she knew Nate had Victor's best interests in mind. 
Devon expressed gratitude because Victor had stated that he had lost all trust in Nate. She Cole stated that Neil Victor was a incorrect a friend to Victoria. And the people they expected Devon left the after some light chat. Adversary. Victoria inquired about Cole's experience at the lake cottage. Cole responded that it was like returning to a lake. Cole told Victoria on the patio that the police had cordoned off the crime scene and that he had to find a way into the lake house without breaching the yellow tape. He admitted that returning to that house had been frightening, but he'd discovered Claire's bedroom and took Claire's hairbrush, toothpaste, and a few other items what they would do if she wasn't. He Cole said that they would get Claire the assistance she required in any case. Victoria concurred. She stated that even if they were not her parents, she still wanted to assist Claire. Cole agreed, but added they couldn't do anything until they had the answers. Victoria claimed that even if they did get answers, it would only raise more questions. Cole explained that it was a difficult scenario to face because they had loved and grieved for Eve, and it had been traumatic. He claimed it was still haunting him. Victoria stated that the hole in her heart had never healed. Cole stated that Eve's survival would be a miracle. Cole acknowledged Victoria's difficulties. She stated that it was also for Cole. Michael verified she promised this, to be and he there understood for each other, no Cole what and Victoria's confusion. Michael, Michael stated that Jordan had done a lot of damage to Claire, and she was quite upset. According to what Claire had informed them, Victoria had led a horrible life. Michael admitted that he had trouble reconciling the terrified, traumatized figure he'd encountered with the horrible crime she was accused of. Victoria inquired about Claire's condition in jail. Michael said that Claire appeared disconnected and terrified. Michael informed Cole and Victoria that Claire was absolutely disillusioned and thought she could not trust anyone in her life. He stated that she was unsure about her true identity. Claire was frozen he said, by the idea that someone she loved, who she thought loved her, had abducted her at birth. He questioned how somebody could be so harsh to someone. He claimed that if Claire was sentenced, it would destroy what was left of her psyche. Michael said it was up to the court to decide, but first they needed to establish Claire was their daughter. Cole claimed to have the items needed for a DNA test. Michael agreed to take on the case if Victoria and Cole were also on board. He stated that if Claire was sentenced, she would face a lengthy prison sentence and would want all the assistance she could obtain. Cole and Victoria, he said, would have to make a issues, and but he worried if it would change their feelings Victoria about assisting Claire. Victoria told Michael that they were still absorbing the possibility that their daughter was alive. She claimed it was too much for her to bear, but Claire needed to be defended. Victoria agreed that Claire deserved a counsel to get her out of jail and the therapy she need. Michael stated that their defence would be that Jordan was to fault. Jordan, he claimed, had deliberately broken Claire's soul before brainwashing her into doing really Jordan's bidding. In assisting Claire. He claimed Jordan Michael had stated that it was Claire personal to him because he knew how Claire parents and parental figures might influence a child's mind. He admitted to having his own dark side to deal with when he was younger, and he knew how terrible that kind of conduct could be. Anyone who treats a youngster in this manner will pay a high price in this life, and then Abby asked Devon what was bothering him when he arrived at society. Nate's official first day back at the workplace, he stated. Because Lily was away, Abby claimed it was a wonderful thing. Devon said that he had believed that until Victoria arrived and the air became icy for Nate. Devon expressed concern because Nate was most likely affected by Victor's one-two punch and the termination of his and Victoria's relationship. Devon didn't want Nate disturbed Nate since they wanted him to concentrate. Abby but she blamed Victor Devon's as well for the prank he'd perpetrated. Devon stated that the family would have been terrified if Victor had gone insane. Abby expressed her relief at being free of the drama. Devon informed Abby that Nate said... It was never his desire to get Victor imprisoned so that Victoria could reclaim control of the company. Nate, he continued, had been watching out for the company and Victor. He stated that he wished to trust Nate and that Victoria believed Nate. But Nate Daniel believed Victoria Devon that he had supported spoken him. with Lily earlier. Devon, that he Devon said he had too and that Lily longed home.
Lily, according to Daniel, was precisely where she needed to be, with Ma Abby inquired about Heather's well-being. Heather said that she was glad to be back and that she had a job at a fantastic company. Devon publicly welcomed her on board, saying he was grateful for her legal expertise. She stated that she hadn't felt so balanced in a long time. She also described how Daniel assisted her in finding an apartment. Horrible decisions Genoa for City, all the wrong she said, reasons after grounded taking her a good, and made her hard look at herself. How unstable her life Lucy was close to her father, she stated, and she was in the proper place. Heather and Daniel were shown to a table by Abby. Daniel expressed his delight that Heather would be starting immediately at Chancellor Winters in case of any license concerns with the games. Heather went on to say, When you think the truth with all your heart, the road is paved with justice. That was a line from Chelsea's game, according to Daniel. Heather stated that she had played it and had progressed to emotional Daniel, lawyer she level 72. Both rewarding she and stated tough, that she and that she couldn't to put it down. Hearing her say that meant a lot to, to Daniel. She claimed it was a fun game that taught her a few things about herself. She expressed her admiration for Daniel and expressed her belief that he had found his calling. Daniel concurred. When Daniel received a call from Lily and went away from the table to speak with her, Heather was dissatisfied. Abby informed Devon at the pub that it was great that Heather had found her footing and brought Lucy to live with her father. Heather was being watched suspiciously by Abby. Abby inquired as to when Lily would be arriving home. Devon was unsure. Charlie, he explained, would be flying in from New York to spend the weekend with Lily and Matty. Matty would benefit from family bonding, according to Abby. She predicted that property, Daniel would miss Lily terribly. Heather's Victor. relationship with Daniel when she didn't Abby's hear back, she removed she a flask from her purse and walked to the bar to replenish it, but instead drank directly from the vodka bottle. When Victoria called out to her, she was taken aback.